As I was beginning to prepare for this sermon, my first reading of Luke chapter 15 seemed to be all about things that were lost and then found. I can certainly identify with the woman who lost the coin and searched all over for it. How many of us have misplaced our keys and searched frantically for them? The search fueled by the, the anxiety of not being able to drive our car or lock our house in the intense relief and joy of finding them. I remember hearing on social media recently of a friend who lost her wedding ring and found it outside in a pile of leaves. The relief was palpable even through the words of her post after finding the sacred symbol of her 54-year marriage. Things that we have lost and then found again really do seem to take on new meaning for us. What about when we lose our faith, leaving a gaping hole in our life and soul? I can remember times that I could not even feel a drop of love from the divine and felt that my faith was gone forever. Each time, my faith has renewed with new understandings and appreciation for God's presence in my life. Just like my recovered set of keys and my friend's recovered wedding ring, my newfound faith was more precious to me than ever before. Though, th though this first reading of today's scripture was enlightening, I couldn't help but to feel that there was more to it. There is a deeper message than simply about things lost and then found. I think about one of my seminary colleagues who has been captured by the idea of resistance literature. Resistance literature is a literary genre that is written from a socio-political point of view, struggling against the dominant ideologies. I took an another look at this scripture through the lens of resistance. Jesus tells these three parables in response to criticism from the Pharisees who said, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. He begins with the story of a shepherd who leaves the remaining 99 sheep unattended as he searches for the one who is lost. Although it seems a bit implausible to risk losing 99 other sheep to look for the one who has wandered off, Jesus points out that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Now, I want to pause here and ponder what Jesus might have meant by sinner. What if he meant those separated from God? Jesus elevated the importance of the ones who are struggling above those who are having an easier time of it. The next parable is about a woman who has lost one of her 10 silver coins. This coin is equivalent to about a day's worth of wages. I wonder why Jesus told this parable about a woman. And I also wonder what she's doing with 10 days worth of wages. Anyway, she lights a lamp and sweeps and searches carefully and is overjoyed when she recovers the lost coin. In the first parable, what was lost was one out of 100. Now what is lost is one out of 10. Again, Jesus points out that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then Jesus tells a story that we know is the prodigal son. The first, the first story was about losing one out of 100. The second story was one out of 10. And this story is about losing one out of two. Jesus has ramped up the importance of what was lost in each story. The first part of the story is about a younger son who took his part of inheritance and went off to another country and squandered his property in dissolute living. Dissolute means to have lax, lax morals. So I imagine this son drank and ate and partied until he ran out of money. Then a famine came about and he had not reserved any money for just in case. He hired himself out to feed pigs 
And then he became envious of the pig slop because he had nothing to eat at all. I think you could say that he hit bottom. This son humbled himself and decided to go back home and ask his father if he could work as one of his father's hired hands. He didn't have any expectation to be celebrated upon his return. This story is a little different from the others in that the father wasn't searching for his son, but the father's joy at his son returning was great. He recognized his son from far away and ran to him. He told his slaves to bring out the finest robe. He put a ring on his finger. He put sandals on his feet. He welcomed him home as someone who was prized. He called for a celebration, killing the fatted calf. Now, the fatted calf is quite a luxury. Imagine humbling yourself admitting defeat and misgivings, only to be celebrated and given not only an extravagant welcome, but expensive gifts as well. Which brings us to the next part of the story. The oldest son sees all of this act activity and asks someone what's going on. He hears about his brother coming home and the robe and the ring and the fatted calf and all, and he was furious. The eldest son refused to go in and join the celebration. His father came out and began to plead with him to come in and join the party. The eldest son complained that he had worked for his father and had never disobeyed him, and yet his father had never given him even a young goat that he might celebrate with his friends. This son was incensed that his brother, after squandering all of his inheritance, returned to a celebration, including the fatted calf. The father explains to his oldest son that his brother was dead and is now alive, was lost and now is found, and this is the reason for the celebration and the rejoicing. We don't know how this story ends. Does the oldest son join the celebration or go off in anger to be by himself? I wonder if Jesus used the oldest son as a metaphor for the Pharisees. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he turned things inside out, upside down. The last will be first, the first shall be last. He worked to raise people's consciousness. Jesus told these three parables in response to being criticized by the powers that be, the dominant ideology for associating with sinners. It occurs to me that in telling, in the telling of these stories, he was turning the criticism back onto the Pharisees. He perhaps put the Pharisees in, a, in the place of the oldest son in the parable of the prodigal son. They, like the oldest son, had to make the decision if they would join the celebration and welcome those who are struggling, those who have been lost, Jesus elevated the importance of those living on the margins of society, the ones who have been lost, those who are struggling with their faith. He elevated them even above those who have been righteous, perhaps those who have never lost their faith. A, month, a few months ago, I came across a book by Shelley Rambo called Spirit and Trauma, A Theology of Returning. In this book, Rambo reimagines the Easter story through the lens of trauma. She says that those who are experiencing un unprocessed trauma are stuck in the Holy Saturday of their experience. They are stuck between the traumatic event or events, the crucifixion, and redemption, the resurrection. Holy Saturday is a time of separation from God and everything else. It is a time of absolute isolation. Those of us who can identify with this metaphor will understand this feeling of separation. Feeling separated from the holy is a desolate, lonely experience. In those times, it's hard to imagine that God loves us. Trauma that interrupts or warps relationship with others 
can also do the same in the relationship between ourselves and God. As Jesus teaches in these parables, the separation is from our response to our traumatic experiences, not from God. God is so concerned for us that God would leave the 99 to come and recover the one who is lost. I imagine that God is always present with us, even when we cannot experience the Holy Presence through the isolation of our own personal Holy Saturday. Jesus tells us over and over about the joy in heaven as one who is lost is recovered. It is my prayer that those who are experiencing a Holy Saturday in their own lives can hear the message from today's scriptures. God values you beyond all else. God is patiently waiting for your return and will welcome you with a great celebration of the Holy Spirit wrapping you in holy love. Amen.